Photographers are much like diamonds. They're sharp. They'll cut you if you hold them. Women use them. They throw them out after they're done. They sell them. Women sell them to stores. Wow. I studied photography for about 41 seconds while getting my passport photo. I'm a vlogger. I know nothing. Yet you're asking me questions about photography. And I have 10 of them. And I will answer you all peacefully with a peace mind and heart. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. If you're wondering why the glory is so gloriful today, it's because we're on the Voidy Lander 35mm 21.2. It's unreasonable at best, but the magic's in your heart. Let it seep in. We might switch to a wider lens and then the DJI action. Just is an action cam better than the Sony a7S III? I think it is. I'm likely buying a Canon G7X Mark II soon. Oh, you debunked your own ass immediately. Why? Who would ever, it didn't really improve anything over the Mark I which was shit, had the worst stave in the business. Are you kidding me with that noise? What the hell is that? A farting drill? Let's not forget here, I sold my Canon G7X Mark I to get the Sony X3000. That's how bad and shaky it was. It was terrible and so many YouTubers use it. 100% of the time you're out of focus, it's pulsing worse than a Panasonic. It's a terrible stave. Like, don't ever buy a Canon camera without dual pixel autofocus. You're hurting yourself. I've noticed it has the best stabilization in a thousand dollars. What are you, a monkey? Are you a blind monkey looking for radishes? You don't even eat, digest them well. Why are you looking for them? Any other camera under a thousand with better stabilization? Every single camera ever made under a thousand dollars? Ten times the stable. The Sony X3000, any action cam, DJI, GoPro. These the Sony ZV-1 with its terrible stave, better than G7X? Don't quote me on that. By the way, I currently use the DJI Pocket, so you want to downgrade, basically, to get a worse. Your audience is used to this perfect stave, ultra flow, in focus, nice, everything's nice and pleasant, in focus, and you want to give them punishment? What a dick. Daylight vlogs, I'm looking for a better low light camera with good stabilization. Stabilization is top priority. So get the Pocket 2. It's got a bigger sensor than the one, faster lens, so it's better than what you have. I just, I don't like the Canon G7X series. The whole thing, like I know people that use it, I wanna slap them. All right, this guy's looking at a Nikon P1000. He's been thinking about camera mainly for the giant zoom, real giant zoom. Wants to take pictures of the moon and my neighbor's daughters. Oh God, why do you go there? Do you have any idea the stuff happening underground right now with our children? You don't. If you want to take pictures of the moon, you don't need the P1000. Zooming in all the way will crop in like you won't even get the full moon. You don't need that far. I have some of the best moon pics ever on my Canon SX50. I gave that thing away. You don't need much. A little, little well, just don't take on a full moon. That's where people go wrong. You'll get so much more detail if it's like half, half crescents. Just, I don't know, the shadows, something happens. But full moon, forget it. Nikon's a piece of shit company though, so I'd go Canon SX70, maybe, cause you could vlog with it. It's got a mic jack and decent zoom, tiny sensor, it's bullshit, but your needs are not much. You'll be in prison soon anyway, so. That or Sony RX10 Mark IV, you could get some decent shots. I got some, if you wanna go all the way up to the Canon EOS R, I might have some footage for you. Let's all just sit back and relax. The glory is ours, my friend. You wait for it, you wait for it. Canon EOS R, 800mm, Tony 11, in 4K, with enhanced stabilization. Are you believing this right now? I'm an astrophysicist, and I would like to teach you a little something. You see this? That's a fake moon. It doesn't actually exist. There is no planet. We've never landed on it. It's a spiritual entity. For those of you who don't know that, it's in the dome. 
circulates around. And here we are, looking at it. In my opinion, my tiny little SX50 looked better than that did. So, but that was like full moon versus not, picture versus video. I get it. But still, you don't need to go crazy. Nikon sucks. Canon all the way. I have a Canon 60D, which was released in 2010. Should I upgrade? Even the 1080p is garbage. See, you should probably. A lot of people don't need the upgrade, but like, you're right before dual pixel autofocus happened. The 70D had you. So I would absolutely upgrade. Do you need your stupid lenses though? The APS-C Canon? Do you want to stay APS-C Canon DSLR? I don't know, like the 90D is good. A lot of people swear by it. I think I'd rather have the M6 Mark II just for the size difference. It's so much smaller in the lenses, but they may never release another product again, but do you need it? Like I'm very happy with my Olympus. Are they gonna ever release that, that sound? One more time, I come down there. He lives another day. But thank you so much for not telling me any details about what you plan on shooting. I can help you so much more knowing that, and I know nothing, so we're moving on. Fuji X-T4 or Panasonic S5? That's a tough one. Just if you ever need to autofocus, they're both pretty bad. To be honest with you, like if you're outside and challenging the Fuji, I might even say that Panasonic appears to be more reliable. Like it would, it'll still, no matter what. I just saw the 24 mil 1.8 review. I think it was Robin Wong, don't quote me on that. And it was a good review. And he's saying like, oh, the autofocus is pretty good. But as he's walking, it's going in and out constantly. And that's what Panasonic does, even though it appears, it's less shocking now. There's not as much pulsing, but it's always like drifting in and out. That sound will be the death of me. Personally, I'd go with the Fuji all the way, even though it has its quirks, you can work around them. And at least when it is working, it's smooth and somewhat reliable. It's still like fourth place of the six camera companies. I don't like the odds on that, but it's, it's more magical. The color science of Panasonic is pigskin. What am I, a football? Get out of here. Can you tell me which camera you consider is better between Sony a7C and Fuji X-T4 for the next situation? Oh, we got a lot of shit here. Crispy image, dancing, in a mirror. I'm paraphrasing you. Wide angle, filming myself, small room, sounds dangerous. Don't be near that first guy who taking pictures of you with the Nikon. Just run, shut the door. Good autofocus, I will be moving. Already, you've answered your own question. It's Sony. You can't rely on Fuji in that situation. There's some, you could sit here with a Fuji and chill and lean and out. You could do that. You could vlog some, barely, but you, you wanna dance with a doppelganger in a mirror, confusing the Fuji, which one do I focus on? Don't even look at yourself. That didn't make sense. Sony all the way. If you need good autofocus, it's Sony. You could get away with Canon, maybe even Nikon. Olympus, if you don't move too fast, then it drops off a cliff hard. Don't even look. Do you have any other needs? User friendly, beginner friendly, none of else what you need. That was a sentence, trust me, look it up. Just Sony, all the way. A7C, that's your geek. Let me be honest with you for a second. I was in denial for months after getting the perfect camera. We're looking at it. It's perfect in every way. Even though I'm on a manual focus lens, I can't show off to you right now. I was like trying to find the nitpicks, like, oh, there's gotta be something else to look forward to. Maybe the color science, is it? Let's be real, these are the best colors we've ever seen. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fantastic, except when the baddest is on it and I wanna manually focus, I could cut my finger with my nail. It's too close to the handle. That's bullshit. I'm gonna return it but it's fantastic. Sony's great. All right, let's switch to the wide angle. I just wanna see what this scene looks like if I don't move. Here, we're looking at 35 mil right now. Let's switch to 15, the Nisi. Tony four. My God, that is some wow. That is all my secrets are revealed. 
I had to bring the light way closer and brighten it. That's a, that's a good shot. Why does that look so red? Oh, it's the peaking. I get it. Oh, I suck at my job. Now I can't even read the screen. It's so bright. Help. Now this is a nice shot and all, but I wish I had a closet of mystery to enhance our lives. We got another question here. Oh, we have our first member, Desi. You can be a member if you want. You get special icons. He didn't use any for some reason, but I tried. I can't reply to people's comments with my own icons. That's some bullshit, YouTube. But I can make them in the first comment. You get ton of things. You don't want it? I get it. Dear Casey, from the moment I first laid eyes on this poorly made YouTube channel, I knew that you were the one for me. Okay, you got weird immediately. You crossed off, I'm banning you for six months. You're banned. I have a M6 Mark II with a kit lens and an 11 to 22 is a good and decent little kit there. It's not bad, I wouldn't mind it. You send it on over here sometime. I would like to get something a bit more magical. I don't know if it's buying a new rig or just attaching a unicorn horn on the hot shoe. Oh God, these are painful to read. New lens, yes, obviously 16 mil Sigma. 1.4 or the 30 mil, like that's all you need for that system. You want magic? There it is. I would get the 16. I have no idea what you even use it for. Thanks for telling me. Sony ZV, oh God. I've been some pretty warbly images when it moves around quickly. Olympus M1, why are you looking when you already have perfection? M6 Mark II is the latest. I wish I had it. I wish. I would like it. Canon colors, it's like 4K finally, 1080p. 120 frames, not bad. They got some lenses from Sigma, not their own. I have a YouTube channel with a family, a kid-centric channel that does talking head toy reviews and visit theme parks. Better not be Diz. I ain't even gonna say it. We record walking around. I have slightly shaky hands. That's gonna be a problem. There's no Ibis in it. The lens don't have it either. If you're very careful with digital stabe, you might last. Don't walk and film, walk to the place, then take a shot, steady as all can be. You might live in a pretty heavy step. So I really want to improve stabilization if possible. Please help me, tell me what to buy. I would stick with the kit lens. That'll be the most stable, then you're good. Then when you want your magic, you take care, put it on a tripod, get your Sigma. We're done with you. What do you think the best mic is for vlogging outside with more than one person? Just keep it simple, Rode Video Micro. You're done. It's still like the best. I've seen like the Sennheiser, they try. The MKE 200, it's smaller, it should be nicer, but it has handling noise and it sounds a bit tinny. Anything else you need a battery for, you complicate your life, but if you wanted to step it up a notch, the Sennheiser MKE 400 or the Rode video mic NTG. That's what I would go for, but stick with the Rode Micro. You can't go wrong with that thing. That's a hero of mics. Question, I can purchase the Fuji XS10 Mint secondhand for almost the same price as a G85. I don't walk and talk. You already answered yourself. The only reason you would get the G85 is if you were walking and talking and you're not. Oh, I helped you. I don't walk and talk, really. Just handheld, talking to camera, typically static, hiking, predominantly video. If you watch my most recent vid, you'll get the idea. Oh, I did. I watched this guy. Should I buy it? Or stick with the J85? And I yelled at you for asking this twice. Don't ever ask it twice. That's the rule. Especially my mate is buying one and we share lenses. Hmm, interest. Oh God, he's buying lenses for the J85? Oh, that's a bad friend. Just leave him in the forest. Let a bear feast on his meat. He'll make better use of it. Love to hear your thoughts. Cheers from New Zealand. XS10, I saw your vlog. So you're in, you're hiking in nature with your best buddy. I love it. Fantastic. You could get by with the XS10. It's just wide enough to get you both in the shot. Oh boy, what lens are you going to use? They don't really have wide lenses. That's a bit of a nightmare. You could probably get away with the 16 mil 2.8. It's wide enough, kind of. It's almost like a 15, I think. It's a bit wider than the 1.4 version. Listen, you got enough tone of there. It should be stable enough if you got the digital stay, but even without it, if you're just handheld standing there, 
and you train your arm to develop the strength. If it was just me, I'd probably be getting the DJI Osmo action. Just, it's so simple. Simplify your life. It's not gonna be the greatest if you have some low light forest scenarios, whatever you do at night. I know what you guys do in the tent. I've seen it, I've seen Brokeback Mountain. It's a good movie. Don't be ashamed. Tell your boss, tell the boss, hey, this is what we do out here. We don't care what you think. Send the horses. In fact, let's switch to the DJI Osmo action and show you that it's just as good as any mirrorless could ever be. It's just as good. Don't lie to yourself. Oh, that's fantastic. I can't even tell a difference. Nobody could. You put this side by side with the A7S III, I know which one I'd buy, no matter how much I had, no matter how much money in that pocket. Just put it on the DJI for the winner. Hey, should I get the Fujifilm XS10 or Canon 90D or Sony A6400 for good all-rounder video recorder? If it's me, I'm looking at that situation. It's tough to invest in a Canon DSLR in 2021. Like, they're never gonna make another lens. Does the Sigma lenses even work for that system? I don't even know what lenses are available. Probably a bunch of bullshit. You can't, even though the 90D is nice, get it out. A6400 versus XS10, that's a, that's a dilemma. Cause you could both get the Sigma 16 mil or the Fuji. No, you couldn't. We both have the equivalents. I know stuff. If it's me, I think I'm leaning Sony just for that fun ass autofocus. The only major difference is the Fuji has the IBIS. Sony's gonna be super shaky no matter what lens you have. So that's a deal breaker if you're walking outside a lot. But if it's just like in studio like this, I would go A6400. It's close though. Fuji has some advantages, 240 frames per second. Slightly better color science according to some. Uh, the IBIS autofocus good enough. Nice lenses. Uh, that's a tough one. It's between Sony and Fuji. I lean Sony just for the reliability. Unlimited recording. All right, last question. I know you hate Panasonic autofocus and Sony with no IBIS, but what would you recommend? G85 or Sony ZV-E10? For what? Can you write it in the section? Man, nobody ever tells me what they're gonna use it for. Like if it was just this, Sony ZV-E10. If I wanna move, G85. You can get a nice lens, tap, lock, boom. And then most stable thing you ever seen. Little dynamic range priority thing on there. I forget what it's called. Dino Heart? Is it Dino Heart? It's not. I wouldn't be giving Sony money for this offering right now. It's clearly recycled goods. Wait for them to actually invent something and not just use what they already had and make it worse. Removing IBIS for vlogging. They're morons. They hate vloggers. That's all I know for sure. They want vlogs right in here. Tight shots. I'm vlogging. I vlog. We made a vlogging camera for you. Do you like it? No, we don't. I've helped you all so much. I, I can't wait to see what you create with my advice. What gear did you buy? The truth is the gear you have is the gear you need. Huh? Take that to the bank. So I'm gonna leave. Was the DJI better than the Sony a7S III? Was a 35 mil equivalent better than wide freaky shit? Is this light too bright? I'll leave. After you subscribe.